To enter the credit workflow, simply click the dial and it'll bring you into that respective credit. Each credit is set up the same, where you'll have your current status as reflected in the dashboard front and center. We always add new entries in the upper right. We export everything in lead review ready format uh, right here. And then finally, you have a log of all of your entries. With the log, you have the flexibility to sort by any of the headers. You can add custom tags, which will allow you to filter throughout the course of your project. It's tracking each entry by person and by date. And finally, when you click the dropdown, it'll give you the details of that specific product and how it's helping from a lead perspective. In this case, this product has an environmental product declaration. It's from NSF, it is a full weight EPD, and it also has a health product declaration. Finally, it saves all of that backup documentation directly in line with your entry, so you don't have to open it up in a separate program or track things in a spreadsheet and then come back and try and correlate your submittal log. So tracking everything in Green Badger is super easy. You also have color coding to let you know which credits a particular product could help, whether it's one, two, or all three of the product credits. To add products, simply click the Add button in the upper right-hand corner. You'll have two options. One, you can search our database, or two, you can upload your own product data. We'd always recommend searching our database first, but you can always upload your own information if you'd like to. You can search broadly by category such as paint, or you can refine it such as by a specific manufacturer or product line. In this case, we'll see what paints we've got. We've got 92 different options, and here you can compare and contrast products to see which benefits you for your project the most, and add them to your project log. In this case, this product has uh, material ingredient reporting. When you click the drop down, you'll see it's got a cradle to cradle certificate, but the PPG product has both a health product declaration and an EPD. So it will help you on two credits versus just one. If this is the product you're gonna use, simply click the add button and you can save it into your log. If you happen to know the cost, if you're at the point you have your subcontractor cost, you can enter it here. Otherwise, you can always update it later in the log. If this product happens to be part of your material structure or enclosure, so structural steel, storefront, uh, or your concrete, you'll check the yes button. If not, you can leave it as no, and then save that project into your log, where you'll see your totals update in real time. If you find a product we don't have, or you just simply want to upload your loan, it just becomes fill in the blank. Hit create custom, and type in your materials. Just check the box of how your product complies based on the backup documentation you have. If it has an environmental product declaration, simply put in who the operator is, what type it is, and upload that document. If it has recycled content, you'd simply select the recycled content box and enter the percentages, and then upload your cut sheet. And finally, if it had ingredient reporting, whether it was an HPD, cradle to cradle, product lens certification, or declare label, just pick the type it has, and then upload that documentation. Hit save and it'll pull that into your log and again, update all of your totals. For lead version four, the three most common credits to be earned are environmental product declarations option one, sourcing raw materials option two, and material ingredient reporting option one. For EPD and material ingredient reporting, that simply requires having 20 products that have environmental product declarations or reporting, whether it's a health product declaration, cradle to cradle or product lens certification. So as you enter products, you'll see this number go up by one each time, and once you hit 20, you'll have enough to earn the credit. Sourcing of raw materials is a dollar-based calculation. So you need 25% of your total material cost to be recycled content, FSC wood, or some other contributing factor. In this case, we have uh, $2.36 million of material cost in divisions two, uh, three through 10. So 25% of that number is about $600,000. So you will need $600,000 of compliant products to earn, the, uh, earn this credit. Every time you make a line item with a sourcing of raw material dollar value, it'll contribute. So in this case, we have one product uh, that we've got recycled content. It's contributed a little bit. Uh, so if we come in here and edit our interior metal studs and say that there is $150,000 worth and that it has 100% you know, 
recycled content, it'll contribute $150,000 to our total. So you'll now see our percentage has went up to 7%, and every time you add a line item, it'll keep going up and keep going up until you hit the 25% threshold, in which case you'll be earning one point for that credit. So to recap, options one for material ingredient and environmental product declaration, you simply need to use 20 products for each one. It doesn't matter if it's $10 a product or a million dollars of that product, it all counts the same. For sourcing raw materials, option two, it's 25% of your total material cost uh, to earn that point. Your total material cost can be determined one of two ways. One, if you are tracking your entire product with a breakout of labor versus materials, you can put in the actual materials cost for the entire project, divisions three through 10, into this box, or if you just have it summed up by materials and labor, which 99% of projects do, you can simply lump that entire number in for divisions three through 10, and LEED uses a 45% ratio for your materials cost to calculate this number. When all is said and done, you can simply export everything in LEED review ready format. The materials calculator gives you the building product disclosure optimization calculator and product data sheets will give you a zip file with all of your backup documentation segmented by credit. Click the download button and it'll save those exports directly onto your desktop or wherever you choose to save them locally. When we open that zip file, you'll see that we've got our building product disclosure optimization calculator, which is pre-populated. You do not have to come back and fill any of this out. It'll have all of your materials filled out in the correct tabs with all of the relevant information that you have, as well as the summary sheet that you need as you submit to Lead Online. And then you'll also have zip files for each one of those credits with your cut sheets in them. So in this case, I didn't actually upload a cut sheet for sourcing raw materials, so we don't have a zip file of it. But for the ones we pulled from the database that had it, you can find the actual health product declarations or environmental product declarations. And with that, you'll have everything you need for tracking your sustainable material credits for LEED version 4. Tracking low emitting materials is similar to tracking the uh, material and resource credits. When you come in, you have your dial that is showing you how many compliant product categories you have. Beneath you have a log with all of your product categories and all your products separated in each category. Simply add in the upper right, and again, we export into lead review ready format. Inside of your logs, you'll have a running list of all of the products that you have. As you click the drop down, that will again give you the lead specific details. So in this case, this product has both the emissions information as well as the actual VOC content. And then it will save all of your backup documentation directly in line with your entry. In the case where you have products that are missing some of that information, such as this, uh, this entry, you will see it flagged in red. So in this particular case, this product has VOC content. So VOC is green, but it is missing the general emissions evaluation. So it is shown as red. If you come across this information, you can always come back and upload it and it'll turn green. You'll also see the paperclip is red, meaning that it's missing at least one of the two pieces of backup documentation. So you'll always have a visual cue of if your products are all good to go or whether they still need some additional attention. When you click add here, it'll bring up another option to search our database. As you type in a product name, it'll pop up all of the available options. Just pick the correct one from the drop down menu and then pick the actual product that you're using. If we've got it in our database, it'll provide you all of the relevant details. In this case, we have the emissions information, so we'll tell you the standard it meets, the TVOC range, and give you a cut sheet. We'll also provide, in this case, the actual VOC content of this product and a cut sheet. As the user, you simply need to pick how this product is being used. This is a cove base adhesive, so we simply pick cove base adhesive, and then put in a volume. If you don't know the actual volume, it's fine just to put in a one, but the lead calculator does require a number in there. If everything is compliant, you can also put in a one. If you end up using some products that do not have the emissivity information, you will need to track the actual volume of all of those products. Simply hit save and it'll pull it into your log with all of the appropriate backup documentation. If we don't have it in our database, when you start typing, it'll pop up and nothing will come up in the dropdown. So in this case, it says it's new. You will type in the product name. So if it's a paint, for example, come in, there's no products, it says paint. 
then just pick the category. In this case, it's a paint and coating, and then it becomes fill in the blank. Which emission standard does it meet? What is the VOC range? And then upload a cut sheet to verify that. Same, similar here, what type of product is it? It is a flat paint. How much did you use? And what was the actual VOC content of that product? Backed up with a product data sheet. Hit save and it'll pull that into your log as well. When all is said and done, you can export the low emitting materials calculator. And if I click product data sheets, that would give me a separate zip file with all of the data sheets separated by product category. So in this case, you would get four separate zip files that you'd have for your backup documentation. Otherwise, the low emitting calculator is also what you submit to USGBC. And again, you get that pre-populated so you don't have to continuously add new rows and scroll the roughly 50 columns over it takes to, to fill out all of the columns that are required. The last thing to note, when you first set up your project, you will have to select what type of product project it is. If it is an IDC or interiors project, you won't have any options here because all of the credits are relevant. If it is a new construction project, you need to pick if it is a uh, new construction with or without furniture as part of your scope. And if it is a school or healthcare project, that is separate as well. And you need to pick whether that is with or without furniture. And that's going to determine how many compliant categories you need for your point totals. Construction waste is set up in a similar fashion. Your dial is going to tell you front and center what your current diversion percentage is. So how much waste have you generated and how much were you able to divert from the landfill? It also correlates the total number of material waste streams that you have. To earn one point, you need to recycle at least 50% and have three waste streams. To earn two points, you need to recycle at least 75% and have at least four waste streams. When you first set up your project, you'll need to select what unit you're tracking it in, whether it's tons, pounds, cubic yards, or any of the metric systems. Once you've selected this unit and started making entries, you cannot change it. So please make sure you, you pick it up, and if you do have something in an alternate format, you'll have to convert it before you make your entry. The setup is the same. You'll have your log of all of your materials. In this case, this is a credit you do need a written management plan for. Again, you can download that in Word version from our uh, credit help section. But you can upload that here, and then as you get your waste tickets or waste reports, you're simply hitting the Add button. Choose the material that you're recycling. Tell us how it's being diverted. Are you recycling it? Are you throwing it away? And what is the total amount of waste that was generated? If you get monthly reports from your vendor, you do not have to put in you know, every single waste ticket. You can simply summarize it for the month and just put in the total amount of weight for that particular line item, as well as how it was recycled. If you've got waste, you simply pick waste trash from your dropdown, select that it went to the landfill, and put in the total amount of waste. Identify who the hauler was or where the end result was. If you have the actual date of your waste ticket, you can simply pick when the uh, dumpsters were picked up. And finally, if you've got the waste ticket, you can simply attach it right there. Hit save. It's going to pull that into your log and update all of your percentages. Finally, you can export a number of different options here. The waste summary is what goes to USGBC. The waste tickets is a zip file of all of your backup. A waste log is the spreadsheet version of your online log that lists every single entry and material. And finally, your waste management plan is what you also need to submit as part of your documentation package. The waste log here just rolls up all of those individual entries into similar materials and types. And so you don't have a running list, it just rolls it up, in this case, by steel, by concrete, and gives you that summary, and then the final summary page gives you your diversion percentage and your total number of material streams, which is the relevant information for your USGBC submission. Managing your indoor air quality practices during construction with Green Badger is a breeze. Uh, this is another credit where you do need a written management plan here. And while you can add your individual reports directly through our system as well, the easier way to do it is by using our mobile app. 
The app is available on either iOS or Android devices and can work on your phone or on your tablet. So within the app, you'll have a list of all of your credits. If you swipe to the left, you'll have your project dashboard to show you how you're doing. But where the app really comes into play is for managing all of your in-field construction inspection reports. In this case, for indoor air quality, uh, it is all of your SMACNA practices during construction. So here, you can simply select the blue indoor air quality button, add a new inspection report, and give it a name. Here, we've got a list of all of the lead and SMACNA practices that you need to demonstrate if applicable for your project. Simply check the box, type in some comments, hit the plus button, and that allows you to either open your camera or to pull it from your phone if you've already taken it. In this case, we'll select camera, snap your picture, hit save, and you're good to go. You can add as many pictures as you want. You can add as many measures as you want. It'll organize it and lay everything out for you accordingly. When you're done, just hit the save button and your indoor air quality reporting is complete. From a tracking perspective, when we refresh our browser, you'll now have this report sitting here waiting for you. You can edit it online if you were shorthanding, or if you're just tracking, you can just make sure your field team was doing what they were supposed to be doing by verifying that they're doing these reports on a monthly basis or whatever the team has determined. And then from a documentation perspective, and when you click this download button, it'll generate a pre-formatted PDF with your pictures embedded in, date and time stamped with your comments and with your logo embedded at the top if you uploaded it as part of your user profile. In this case, it's telling you it's a construction IQ inspection for your project, who did it, when did you do it, and then it's got a list of all of the measures that you selected with your comments and your pictures, date and time stamped. And this is what USGBC requires when they ask for annotated pictures or annotated reports to verify your measures. In the end of the project, you may have to submit some of these as part of your documentation. Uh, odds are five or six reports, a handful of reports will be sufficient uh, to submit for your documentation. You do not need to submit 50 reports or anything like that. USGBC is just going to want to verify that you did indeed maintain these construction practices throughout the course of construction. For erosion and sedimentation control, we've got similar functionality, but you've got two options here. One, we realize that a lot of project teams either have a form they have to use or a subcontractor is performing your SWIP inspections and that uh, you just need to track and record and log that. If that's the case, simply hit the add button, go to third party inspection report and just type in a name, enter the date that the report occurred, and upload a file to support that. If you want to use our mobile app to supplement or to replace some of those inspections, you can do so as well. If you click the ESC, or Erosion and Sedimentation Control Measures, you'll see we've got a list of the top 30 or so most common erosion control measures. You can simply check which ones are on your project. Check yes or no. If it's not on there, just pull it off. And then as you get into your app, it's only going to show you the measures you selected on your project. If you've got something we don't have, just click the Add New Measure button and you can type it in and save it. Then when you go to your mobile app and go to your erosion control, when you add a report here, it's going to ask you some background questions, give it a name. It's got some background questions you can answer, select your inspection type. And then it'll show you just those erosion control measures that you selected on your job. So as you're walking the site, you can say, yes, our construction exit is great. Our erosion control blanket is great. But our inlet protection, we've got debris and mud and inlet. Same as erosion, uh, indoor air quality to snap those photos. And then go on and finish the rest of your report. Everything else is great, so we're going to say yes. You can actually sign these reports in your phone. We embed a little certification statement because a lot of jurisdictions require that. And then simply hit save. When we refresh our browser, we'll see that report sitting here waiting for us. If we need to edit it, you can come back in and just click edit and update any of your comments or pictures. Or finally, export the report and it'll come as a pre-formatted PDF. Similar to indoor air quality, the report structure will have a 
cover page with your logo telling you it's an erosion control report, and then it'll have all of your erosion control measures with your pictures, comments, and finally your certification statement that you're not making all this stuff up. From a lead perspective, again, they don't need you to submit every single inspection report that you've ever done. You can simply select four to five reports. We suggest one or two from the beginning, one or two from the middle, and one from the end to submit as part of your documentation to show that, yes, we did maintain these erosion control measures throughout the course of construction. So that is the Green Badger functionality in a nutshell. Uh, it gives you one centralized area where the entire team can collaborate and contribute to earning your lead certification goals. Um, we can streamline and automate the process from instantly verifying products to creating your infield inspection reports to finally packaging everything in lead review ready format. If you have additional questions after watching this training video, feel free to reach out to us at help at getgreenbadger.com and we'd be happy to provide additional assistance.